I'm going to read something, just a few chapters of something I've been reading. Amen. It's about temptation. Amen. Amen. It says, it says for a Christian or believers, brothers like ourselves, success often means growing closer to God. Amen. Amen. We'll break and change at the Master's round table tonight. Amen. Everybody, y'all want to say hello to the YouTube channel out there? Amen. Come on. Come on. Y'all know it. Amen. We have been set free in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. The Bible says, when the Son of Man sets you free, you shall be free indeed. There's nothing better to be free in this house. Can I get an amen? amen. So a key aspect in the pursuit of this, amen, is to fight against temptation. You want to be successful in God? You want to be successful in life? Fight against temptation. It is a, let me just kind of spank it a little bit. Let me just kind of play with it a little bit. Oh, y'all don't hear me tonight. It said what? Fight. I guarantee somebody try to take your wallet, you won't fight. Why can't you fight when that temptation comes? You see, we've been so so used to just giving in that we just say, oh, man, what do you mean? Let me try a little bit. Oh, y'all don't hear me get quiet up in here. So what can you do when you're tempted? For the believers wanting to overcome temptation to sin, consider this biblical strategy. To grow in holiness before God, you got to say it's taking us to the word. You know, I love to read some of these commentaries because it always goes back to the word. Amen? Amen. Can I get a witness tonight? Amen. How many come to give God praise tonight in the house? <laughs> so, you know, for the purpose of this this word, this article tonight is to define temptation based on the Bible as anything that influences you to disobey God. So it's saying that anything that tempts us is something that's disobeying God. Mm -hmm. Amen. Mm -hmm. Can I get a witness tonight? Amen. Truly, any situation you face in life will either promote your growth or promote your destruction. My God. Mm -hmm. Huh? Everything that we do in life is either going to build you up or tear you down. Amen. And I want you to know, brothers, that temptation is going, it ain't going to build you up. It's going to tear you down. Can I get an amen? amen. So the, the determining factor is what you decide in your heart to do. So it all, it all starts right here. Do I want change? Do I want to be successful? Do I want to be honored? Do I want to be respected? Do I want integrity in my life? Do I want to be the best man? Go back home, be the best father, best husband. Come on, somebody. Amen. It starts right here. Hallelujah. Or do I want to give in to that drunkenness? I want to go and, and holler at the moon tonight. You know, if, if, if July the 4th is coming around, I'm already getting ready for the 4th of July. There's a month away. You already think about party. My God, I'm talking about somebody. <laughs> Am I right, the way? Yep. You already know uh, something coming a month already. You already think about what you're going to do. The devil is a liar. Why don't you go say, let me go open up a fireworks stand. Let me buy some fireworks and make some money off the fireworks. Amen. Forget again drunkenness, my God. See, see, there's a way you got to think, brothers. Amen. Amen. It's got to benefit us, not tear us down, but build us up. Can I get an amen, amen. friends? Amen. So you, whatever determines this, that's the factor. It's, it's, it's what we start right here. Amen. Will you obey God and draw near to Him, or will you rebel against God and run from Him? Huh? Think about it now. Will you come closer to God, or will you run from Him? I tell you what, when you're in that temptation and you know you're going to mess up, you ain't coming close to God. You're running from God. You're like, God, man, you know what, I'm sorry, God, but man, I repent, you know, whatever, but I'm a... My... my Trying to find something in his pocket. They, they ain't even nothing in there left. My God, y'all don't hear me tonight. Amen. Y'all ready? Y'all ready? Y'all got the, let me look at my socks. See if I still got a little piece in there. Y'all know what I'm talking about. Come on, somebody. Amen. Y'all, maybe I left a little, little peg. You, you know, you don't, you ain't got no more. Yeah, let me turn my pocket inside out. Let me, yeah, let me turn this pocket right up in here. Well, maybe it fell in the store. You're back in the store looking for it like some madman, like a rat. My God, I'm talking to somebody. You running from God. 
Because that dope tempting you. My God. Will you obey God and draw near to him or will you rebel against God and rub him? You are not a passive victim here. Instead of choosing to sin, resolve to implement the following strategies to overcome temptation in your life. Amen? Amen. Number one, be reconciled to God. According to the Bible, it says, your first step in overcoming temptation is to turn to him in repentance and faith. Amen. Amen. You, you, got, you, got to re, you got to reconcile to God and say, okay, God, I repent of this, all this wrong I'm doing. Amen. But I have faith in you that you're going to guide me in the right way. Hallelujah. Can I get a witness? Amen. Acknowledge that only Jesus, Jesus Christ can make, your, make you right before God. He died in your place to satisfy just wrath of God against your sin, and he rose from the dead to prove the debt was paid. Amen? That's our first way to look at it. You know what, God? God went to pay for my sin. Why do I want to keep sinning? He paid something big for us. Why do I want to just keep getting tempted, keep messing up in life? Amen? Amen. Your first step in overcoming temptation is to turn to him in repentance and faith. You see, part of from apart from Christ, all people are enslaved to sin. Amen? Amen. It's in the Bible. Apart from Christ, the Bible says that we're all enslaved to sin. How many were enslaved to sin? Come on. Amen? I think we all were. I think some of us are still enslaved to sin. Y'all better help me up in here. I don't got a room full of saints up in here. I'm talking to somebody tonight. Some of us are still enslaved to sin and we don't even know it. Some of us are still waiting just to... Hear that knock on the door. Somebody come and get us. And you know what, brothers? I love y'all, but I'm out. Uh-oh. Getting quiet. We obey sin's desires and attempt to live apart from God's righteousness commandments. Hear this now. What does it say? We obey sin's desires. You know that the desire comes from in us? And we begin to hear it. We begin to, man, taste it. You know, I mean, you, you, ever, you ever be away from something so long you taste it? Amen. Ain't nothing but the devil. The desires is what gets us in trouble. Can I get an amen? amen. But thanks be to God that though you were slaves to sin, you became obedient from heart to that form of teaching to which you were committed. And having been freed from sin, you became slaves of righteousness. Amen. Amen. Romans 6, 17 and 18. So y'all can read that later. It said, you know, you, once you become obedient from the heart to that form of teaching, which is the word of God, it will set you free. You won't be a slave to sin no more. Because the Bible says you'll be a slave to righteousness. Amen. Do you know that's what he's telling us? That we got to learn how to do to be righteous. Say, no, 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 I'm not going down that road because I know we're leaving. No, I, I'm doing the right. I'm doing the right. I'm doing something right today. Hallelujah. I'm trying to be a better dad to my children. I'm trying to be a better husband to my wife. I don't need to be looking down here at my neighbor's wife when I got one at home. You see that lust to come before. Oh, my God, y'all don't hear me up in here. Amen. You see, we got to learn how to be a slave to righteousness, to do the right things in life. Can I get an amen? Amen. As a believer in Jesus, give thanks that the Lord knows how to rescue the godly from temptation. 2 Peter 2.9. How do you find that rescue? You've got to tell yourself, well, how do I find this rescue? Well, what's going to rescue me from this temptation? Amen? you got to turn away from sin and turn to God. You see, this is where it starts. You know, you you got to say, okay, man, you know, I know where I'm going. If, I, if, if my heart desires something that ain't right, I got to turn from it. I got to go back to the word of God. Come on, somebody. Amen. Can I get an amen? amen? Remember that we do not have a high priest who cannot sympathize with our weaknesses, but one who has been tempted in all things as we are yet without sin. Therefore, let us draw near with confidence to the throne of grace so that we may receive mercy and find grace to help in time of need. Amen. Hebrews 4, 15 and 16. 
You got to confess your faults to him and commit to repentance each day, it says. You know that, you know, when we begin to get up in the morning and say, man, I, I just, I messed up yesterday. I messed up in this morning. You got to get up and say, man, I repent this morning. I got to follow the ways of Christ. I got to follow this new life. That's how you start your day. Then you're closing yourself in righteousness. Can I get an amen? amen. It says, each day, as a slave of righteousness, seek to please God in everything you think, say, and do. My God. Now that's... Come on, somebody. Can I get away this tonight? When you're a slave of righteousness, you got to seek to please God in everything you think, everything you say, and everything you do. Man, everything that you think, wait a minute. How can I do that? My mind is out there. I'm in the church, I'm in the home, but my mind is out in the world. Everything that I say, sometimes I'm not saying what I should be saying. And I surely ain't doing what I should be doing. Yo, y'all don't hear me tonight. But he's telling us to overcome this temptation that it starts here. It starts what we do and what we say. We got to say, you know what, today I'm going to be a better man today. Today I'm going to be the man that God had called me to be. You know when you start calling that out in the morning, just everything positive, everything, man, your whole day will go like that. You get up in the morning and go, oh, this brother done hit my shoe, this brother, did, this brother said this and everything. Oh, my God, I'm talking to somebody. <laughs> This brother didn't get up to make the coffee this morning. He didn't got no bacon. He don't know how to cook no bacon. My God, I'm going to, can I keep on going? Come on. He didn't make my sandwich. He knows I'm working and he ain't working. He ain't no good, boy. You start going. There you go. Wait a minute. Where's the love in the house? It starts. Yeah, it's love, all right. Come on, talk to me, brothers. Coffee, eggs, and bacon. What are you complaining about? That's right. <laughs> and tortillas, too, my God. <laughs> and some free holders up here. Y'all better go ahead. And some rice. Beans and rice in Jesus Christ. You know what I tell my wife? Don't feed them no more meat, man. You know what? No. I'm not like the, the, back in the Old Testament. You know, they were mad at God. They said, Where's the meat? Where's the meat? They were mad at him because they were going through the wilderness. There was no meat. He's all them yeah. doves, all them pheasants come flying down. They said they had to walk through them. Wow. He gave so much meat, they threw it up. They didn't want no more meat. Mm. He said, you want meat? I'm going to give you meat. Mm. He was telling them, you know what? No, you don't need meat. You need me. My God, I'm talking to somebody. That's how we should be in the house. Don't worry about if there's breakfast in the house. Worry about if there's Jesus in the house. Amen. 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 You got to understand, you got everything you do, everything you say, everything you, you got to pray in the morning. You know, if not, that temptation will come in. The Bible says don't give that devil a foothold. Yeah. Don't even give him a foothold. Don't even let him stick his foot in the door. Because he stuck his foot in there, that's it, he coming in. My God, I'm talking to somebody tonight. Pray for his protection and strength to endure temptations you face daily, it says. My God, that's deep. What is it telling us? Pray for his protection. We got to call out God, God, I don't care what you do. I don't, I, I, even if I feel I'm tempted this morning, God, I pray to God that he going to bring something and put a stumbling block in front of them. Hallelujah. You might be driving already going to the corner when you shouldn't be going over there. Boom, your tire blow out. My God, you ain't going to make it over there. You begin to pray and ask God for his protection. Guess what? I promise you, he'll keep you from falling off. Amen. Amen. How many of us, when we were young, we had fathers. Some of us, I know a lot of us didn't have fathers, but had an uncle or an aunt. Some said, don't get too close to that water because if you fall in it, you're going to drown. Mm. Come on, somebody. Right. Don't get too close to the cliff. Say, don't get too close to the cliff. You're going to slip far. You're going to hurt yourself. Right. What were they doing? They were keeping us from falling off. Amen. They were keeping us from getting hurt. Danger. That's why I'm here, Brother Tom. I'm, I'm that shepherd. You know the sheep, you know when the sheep takes off, you know why the shepherd goes and looks for them? Because that sheep is dumb. He gets lost, he don't know how to come back home. 